Good morning. So I believe we'll get started. Um, again, this is um, Orange Quest organizing a campus trivia and research competition during a pandemic. Um, this is Stephanie Ross. I am the moderator for this section. This session. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them to the chat. I will uh, read them aloud when we have time for questions. And um, today's session, it will be um, hosted by Anita Kugin, a liaison librarian in the Department of Research and Scholarship and the Research Impact Team at Syracuse University. She provides research and bibliometric support, instruction, and outreach for Falk College of Sport and Human Dynamics. Anita holds a BS from Northeastern University and an MLIS from Drexel University. Marion S. Hanley is a preservation librarian for Syracuse University Libraries. She manages the essential work of the preservation unit, serves as grant um, as principal investigator for the New York State Conservation Preservation Grant, and co-manages the Disaster Recovery Operations and Emergency Preparedness Program. Marianne holds a BA from Canisius College and an MLS from Syracuse University. Abby kasowitz Shear is a librarian in the Learning and Academic Engagement Department at Syracuse University Libraries. She provides in reference instruction and outreach service and services. Abby holds an MLS and an MS in instructional design, development, and evaluation from Syracuse University, as well as a BA from Brandeis University. Welcome, Anita, Marianne, and Abby. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. That was really great. So hi, I'm Anita Kukin, um, li the liaison librarian to Falk College of Sport and Human Dynamics. Um, thanks to all of you for attending this morning. We're excited to share Orange Quest, organizing a campus trivia and research competition during a pandemic. Um, so I'll be getting us started with a little background about our fall 2020 outreach team, our scope of work, um, provide a quick view into our overarching planning process. And, and then I'll pass the mic over to Abby kasowitz shear who will share our process for developing our culminating event, Orange Quest 2020. And then to Marianne Hanley, who will dive deeply into the details of how the game was played. Next slide. Sorry, I forgot to tell you to do that. We're kind of, you know, getting our, our motions moving today. So, um, so we reserved a few minutes at the end of this presentation for questions, but if you have questions along the way, please do pop them into the chat and we'll field them at the end. Next slide. So Syracuse University um, has a full-time enrollment of approximately 23,000 students. Um, that breaks down into uh, approximately 15,000 undergrads, um, about 7,000 grads, and then uh, we have a law school that um, about 1,000. So it's primarily a residential campus with only a handful of programs offered online. And of course, with COVID, when COVID hit, we, like everyone else, scrambled and had to adjust our campus-facing approach and transition as, as much as we could online for the new academic year. Since we did not have an outreach librarian, the position was recently vacated for a good reason, a promotion. Um, we um, had to assemble a new temporary team comprised of representatives from across SU libraries to transform outreach for this very unusual fall semester. The team was given a very loosely defined scope to review all events that typically lead up to the start of the academic year, identify what needed retooling for a virtual fall, and then consider what new things we might add to continue conversation and engagement between SU libraries and our constituents through the, the semester. The team took a couple of weeks to review our usual marketing and, uh, and event strategy, made initial recommendations, and then turned our attention to what that continuing engagement or in conversation between the libraries and campus could look like beyond the start of the semester. Needless to say, we floundered a little bit. We needed information and inspiration. We brainstormed and did research and brainstormed some more. We considered questions like, what is it that we typically do during a semester? Why do we do it? What do we as a library value? What do our constituents value? How does this match up with the library's strategic goals? How about the university's strategic goals? Is what we value reflected in the events and activities that we conduct? Are the libraries the right people to be doing work 
this work or should we it be happening elsewhere on campus? If so, is, is it happening elsewhere on campus? A needs assessment would have been great, but there was no time. Next slide. So we capitalized on someone else's needs assessment. <laughs> so we found um, a university with a similar enrollment demographics and programs of study um, that came in, in handy. So according to research by Harlow and Hill 2020, and I have references at the end if you want to read these, um, uh, online users often feel disconnected from campus and it is important for libraries to investigate ways to improve outreach and marketing campaigns to distance students and instructors. Of course, and beyond access to more ebooks and streaming content, constituents sought more tutorials on how to use library resources and make more personal contact with their librarians earlier in their programs. Another publication, McClellan, Detmering et al. 2017, served to inspire with their work developing a scholarly publishing literacy program for graduate students. And I'll touch on this uh, lightly a little later. This research and brainstorming cycle of planning helped us organize our ideas within a framework that we use to guide us in the right direction toward the things that we care about. For us right now, it's these four categories. Get to know your library. What inspires us to learn? An inspire campaign. Some of, uh, some of you may recognize this third one, scholarship is conversation and celebrate SU. Happy birthday, SU. We turned 150 years strong in 2020. And like so many other things that happened in this crazy COVID time, our, co our mile marker of a birthday party looked incredibly different from what was originally planned. The next slides will view, will very briefly introduce some of the ideas that we organized or newly developed for fall 2020 and beyond. The elements in this category, get to know your library, revolved around getting to know SU library spaces, services, and resources. And throughout this and each of the other categories, we wanted to emphasize that SU libraries has resources to feed the whole person, academics, personal interests, passions, and health. From this list, we contributed trivia questions to be posted to our social media channels that would point folks toward our collection to find the answers. And of course, there was that scavenger hunt idea and more on that later. Next slide. The Inspire campaign. This second category came from our conversations about what it is that we librarians really value about libraries in general. The content of libraries serve to inspire and impassion. They're exciting places relevant to our everyday needs and interests. We wanted to capture and promote this somehow. Highlighting resources in our collections to celebrate Heritage Months is nothing new. We had just wanted more of that. A lot of work goes into library displays and we wanted to ensure that our distance learners could enjoy them too. Um, we tap tapping our library staff to share the things in our libraries that inspire them would help introduce our staff, make them more approachable and share the things that bring them to libraries. Video on the street, this we imagined would be assigning one of our students or to something akin to a takeover Tuesday, give them a camera and a mic and send them off interviewing people on the Einhorn Walk, which is one of the main thoroughfares um, right behind the library. And again, trivia questions about our collections with random giveaways. Next slide. And scholarship is a conversation. And for those of you who do a fair amount of instruction, you'll recognize scholarship as a conversation. It's one of the frames in the ACRL information literacy framework where folks engaging in the research process at any level are entering into a community discourse, sharing ideas, discoveries, and perspectives as an ongoing conversation. We thought the libraries would be one of those places on campus where we could have a series of events around tough or controversial con conversations, both in person and in print. We already do this with displays like Banned Books Week, but we want more. We want to have more of those on, uh, more of this for online um, engagement with our distance learners. And lastly, this bigger idea of a publishing academy at, at McClellan, at all. This is a uh, this is how McClellan inspired us, um, as yet another another avenue to explore. We um, we have a university press. 
We want to talk more intentionally about publishing. We'll continue to shine a spotlight on our institutional repository and OA publishing, continue our education about copyright in the publishing arena, and fold SU Press and faculty into the conversation to talk about publishing best practices from the author's perspective and the press perspective. Next slide. And lastly, that celebrate SU, certainly not the least of them. So get to know the university's history, 150 years long. There's a lot to know. Celebrate this history. There's so much to be proud of. We have a rock in archives and special collections. Sometimes the inspiration comes from what's old and, and by discovery and engagement made new again. And it's not just about objects. It's all about people in our campus history, as well as those who are still with us today. Let's capture those stories and pass them on to inspire future generations. Next slide. So we did a lot of work uh, to organize and develop outreach ideas over a short period of time and execute the things that we thought we could contribute during the fall 2020, that fall 2020. At the end of the semester, our team would sunset. The framework, outreach ideas, and recommendations were turned over to our ad hoc user services committee, chaired by our strategic marketing communications director, to utilize until the outreach librarian position could be filled. Before we did so, however, we developed our crowning event, Orange Quest 2020, that was designed to include every area of the framework. But the sands of COVID change kept shifting under our feet, all semester long, right up to the end. I turn this over to Abby Keswitz Shear, who will introduce Orange Quest 2020, and then on to Marianne Hanley, who will dive a little deeper into details and share lessons learned. Over, you, over to you, Abby. Thank you, Anita. So, as Anita mentioned, we spent some time coming up with um, an event for the, um, the students at Syracuse University. Um, and they encompass the outreach areas that Anita just presented. Um, and also we wanted to engage students during a time when they were feeling very disconnected. Um, the event Orange Quest was intended for students in the residence halls. Um, and we had wanted to offer a combination of virtual and in-person activities to encourage students to interact with the libraries and other campus locations as much as possible. We partnered with the Residence Hall Association, that's the RHA up here, um, and we came up with Orange Quest, um, which was a trivia and research competition. We'll get more into the details of that in a minute, um, but first I want to give you a little context. Um, so you can see the date um, for the event, it was over a range of dates, November 5th through 14th. Um, this was after Halloween, after the presidential election. We had gotten some feedback from the Office of Student Living. Um, they thought that coming after those um, events would be helpful. Um, and you know, that's just where we were in the semester also with our planning. So there wasn't a whole lot of wiggle room. Um, but in terms of where we are with the where we were with the pandemic at that time. Um, the libraries and the university as a whole mainly was really only open to the Syracuse University community. A lot of staff were working from home. Um, classes were offered. Some were in person, some totally online, and then some were a hybrid. Um, on November 9th, right in the middle of, of our event, um, Syracuse University paused in-person activities due to a rise in COVID cases. And then on November 12th, the university moved completely to online classes and the libraries were only open to faculty and staff. No students or um, even student employees were allowed in the building. So obviously that impacted our ability to require any type of in-person components. Um, of the activity, but we still proceeded and um, went on. So just to give you a little bit more information about Orange Quest, um, here is a little bit of a description 
um, as I said, we intended for students to be able to visit the libraries both virtually and physically, and also um, see campus landmarks along the way. And we developed questions over three main categories, SU history, which is a great way to celebrate um, our, our university history, campus landmarks and research prowess at SU libraries. They, the questions ranged in difficulty and we had some um, kind of bonus challenge type questions and one that we called an ungettable and we'll talk more about that in a little while. Um, students could play in teams of three to four. Um, the, the intention was that they would all be from the same residence hall and we required mask wearing and physical distancing when they were out and about, out and about together as a team. Um, we offered prizes, including pizza parties and t-shirts donated from the Residence Hall Association. Um, our, we had no budget really for this event. Um, so we had you know, the donated t-shirts and then the libraries um, offered to um, provide pizza parties. So you may also be asking why orange? Why are we calling this Orange Quest? Um, as you may know, orange is the color of Syracuse University, but it's also become kind of a way of being here at SU. It's part of our identity as members of the Syracuse University community. Sometimes we'll be called the orange community. So it just seemed fitting. And also, as you may know, um, our mascot is a giant orange. Uh, which will be important to know later on in this presentation. So as, I, as we've hinted, um, Orange Quest was a collaborative project. Um, we worked with staff across the libraries within our outreach team, as Anita mentioned earlier. Um, we had staff from multiple departments and um, graduate student assistants as well. So, so that was helpful. Everyone contributed um, their expertise, which really made the, the event what it was. Um, and we worked with our communications and marketing department within the libraries. They assisted as they, uh, with the prizes and publicity. Um, around campus, we partnered, as I mentioned, with the Residence Hall Association. It's a student-run organization that represents students living in the residence halls. They created publicity and promoted the event through their social media. Um, and they were really instrumental in helping us recruit participants. Um, the Office of Student Living, um, we had consulted with them, as I mentioned about the dates, and they also gave us important advice um, about the timing and prizes and other things. And they offered to have their RAs promote the event um, within their residence halls. Um, and we also got some interesting feedback from the Office of Student Living that they really thought it would be nice for students to be able to connect with library staff in some way. Um, and you know, the way that things were planned for this time around, um, we, the best way that we could do that was to have an email account that we monitor throughout the event where students could ask questions. Um, and, and we had a, a Zoom launch, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But um, this is just something that I think we'll keep in mind as we plan future Orange Quest type events. Um, it would be nice to build in as much interactivity and connection between students and the library staff as possible. So the planning process had a lot of parts um, and you know, we all worked together. We had some subgroups working on different things, um, but I'll just run through. Um, we generated questions, many questions, um, a variety um, of types of questions. And you know, we mentioned this a little bit earlier and you'll see some examples in a bit. Um, we came up with a whole rules, set of rules and scoring rubric. Um, the rules were set to, you know, help students play the game, but also there were some rules related to the pandemic. Um, and Marianne will talk a little bit more about um, the scoring and, and the types of questions and how different questions were worth different points and that kind of thing. Um, we designed a registration form to collect contact information and also 
team names. Um, we designed a system for collecting responses. And this took a lot of discussion. We weren't really sure um, if we should be using an app. There are apps out there for scavenger hunt activities and things like that. There are also obviously um, online survey tools like SurveyMonkey, Qualtrics, and things like that. Um, but obviously we were looking for something both low budget or free and easy to use. And what we came up with for this time around was just using Google Docs. We um, created separate documents for each team and we shared um, that document with that team. And then they would um, record their answers um, throughout the event. One of the, one of the other main criteria for a system for collecting responses was that we wanted them to be able to um, record their answers over a period of time. We didn't want them to just have to do it all once and then submit it. So, so in that way, the um, Google Docs worked really well. And then we could monitor the participation throughout the event and see you know, who's playing and how, how are they doing and things like that. So, um, and it was also the place where we scored the, um, you know, the, the responses. So, so it ended up being a really nice way to keep track and for the, the students to um, participate. Um, whether or not it's feasible for a large group, if we, um, you know, if we do this again, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, we worked with our partners throughout the planning, um, as I mentioned. We created an email account for the event, um, which we monitored, we took turns monitoring throughout the event. And we planned a Zoom launch um, right before the event started to describe the event and also present rules and other details. So this is just a screenshot of a LibGuide that we put together. We wanted a central place for all of the information about the event. So we have links out to our partners' websites, an event description, a recording of our Zoom launch, um, the, a complete set of questions, um, or clues for the activity, our rules, and the scoring rubric. And I believe Anita is going to put the link in the chat so you can feel free to check out the LibGuide. Thank you. And then here's just a copy of our quick short registration form. Um, as I mentioned, it's really just, it was just to collect contact information and the team name, which was how we distinguished the teams, and you'll you'll see some examples of team names in, in a little while. And this is just a, a snapshot of what the participant answer form looked like in Google Docs. Um, we had our Orange Quest logo. We had a link to our um, email, special email account. Um, you can see here, this one was from the team Alternative Facts. Um, and here are just some questions um, and you'll see how the students recorded their answers and bold type here. And also in red font, you'll see where we started to score the answers. And this team happened to come up with a total of 60 points. Um, so at this point, I am going to turn it over to Marianne, who will discuss some of the specific elements involved in the implementation of the event, as well as the results. Okay, so I'm going to start with talking about the Zoom launch. And as we touched on earlier, um, or Abby touched on, so once the teams signed up, what we did is we created a Zoom video that explained the rules. And it was kind of a how-to video. On the video, we talked about the different questions, the types of questions. There were 18 um, simple, rhyming, and complex questions. 
The simple would have meant just a direct question with maybe a one word answer. We also had some fun um, rhyming riddle clues that we had a lot of fun putting those together. And then we had something that was a little more complex with maybe two or three parts. Our bonus questions were a little bit longer. Each of them was different and each team was issued a unique Google link that they were able to upload um, either a picture or a video or whatever it was that they did with the bonus questions. We also offered extra bonus points if maybe they were able to get their whole team um, in the picture or maybe an SU landmark in the background. We di definitely didn't want to leave the students on their own. Um, we were always there if they needed help along the way. And we set up an email, this orange quest at syr.edu. So we took turns as members of the outreach team manning the email account. So we were sort of on call if any of the teams had any questions. We offered extra points for creativity, um, which was really fun. Um, seeing the creative way that the teams came up and how they answered each question differently. So the content of clues. So we really tried to mix it up with the questions. We wanted questions that had answers that were things inside the library, outside the libraries. Um, we made sure that everything was virtually accessible, seeing that it was during a pandemic, but we made a lot of opportunities for the students to get outside on campus and maybe take a picture in front of a, a landmark um, in front of a building and let them mix it up the way that they wanted to do it. We offered the students the ability to use social media to present their end product. Um, we, we offered Instagram and we also offered the ability to post pictures or a video um, to Instagram. We actually encouraged them to do that and by doing that, they would get more points. Also with things like, because it was a library based, let's say they were searching for an article in a database, we recommended that they take a screenshot of it and then upload it. The group shot of the team members next to landmarks um, was definitely encouraged. And then each team was able to create their own team hashtag so that when they uploaded something, we would be able to see what team it was. The whole Orange Quest lasted 10 days. That was the time frame, And we wanted to give them enough time to be able to complete everything within those 10 days. So some of the examples of our questions Let's start with maybe an easy question or um, a simple question would be Syracuse bleeds orange, but this has not always been true. So what were the original Syracuse University school colors? So many of you might be surprised to hear and that our original school colors were pink and green. So if the teams were able to get that answer, they would rack up three points. So the, like I said, that was a simple question. Something a little bit more involved would be the Newhouse School is the nation's top communication school here at Syracuse. And it's where students can study advertising, journalism, 
mass communication, public relations, and public communications in a variety of formats. So what we tasked the students with doing was having them figure out which librarian would they go to for help with research in this field. So if they just did the first part of it, then they would get one point. But we added a bonus. So for each team member, if they were able to name your majors and your subject librarian, so let's say they were chemistry majors and then they added their own subject librarian. And then of course, there's many students that are undecided. So that person would name the librarian for their area of interest. And again, they'd get an additional point for each team member's major and the correctly corresponding subject librarian. So if you had um, everyone in the team do it, you were able to get additional points. And this allowed for not only the students to have some fun, but they were also finding out who their librarian was. So the next time they had a term paper due, they would know, oh, it's, um, you know, Abby Kazowitz Sheer. So they were able to go directly to Abby and get the help that they needed. Now, another fun question that we asked was, write down all the ways that you can get help at the libraries. And they were allowed one point for each correct answer. So we came up with six possible answers for this question with that they could call the library, they could text. Of course, there's in person. So checking with um, your direct librarian or maybe going to the reference desk. And there was also emailing your question, um, going to the library webpage, and then Syracuse University offers a chat. So there were six different correct answers that they could have figured out. So this was one of our fun questions that we asked. We call it our life imitates art question. So the question was life often imitates art in many ways or vice versa. So we tasked the students with finding an image of their favorite painting, book, or movie, and then recreate it. So you can see what this team did was they chose the movie on the waterfront and you'll recognize Marlon Brando who's pictured on the left and the student took a picture of himself sitting in the same pose as Marlon Brando. His head is also pointed in the same direction. He's got the same, you can see Marlon's got kind of a plaid shirt on. He put on a plaid shirt. Um, and then he's got his little toy gun next to him too. So we thought this was a fabulous um, submission. And this was just a, a great um, representative of what we were looking for with this question. So then we've got, you've all heard of selfies, but have you heard of shelfies? So what we did with this question is, who is thought to have coined the word shelfie and what book series did he or she author? So we asked the teams to take a shelfie with your team, as you can see on the left, this is what the students did and with their shelf of books and the team itself in it. Um, and incidentally, the answer to this question of who it was that coined the word shelfie 
was Rick Reardon was the author of the book series. And the book series was, they could choose from two, the Percy Jackson series or the Kane Chronicles. So you can see that um, the team on the left did that. And the same team was another question was take a photo of your favorite campus outdoor sculpture building or a library book. So they did a selfie of their favorite, favorite uh, building with their favorite outdoor sculpture. And you can see that they're following all the rules with their masks, even when they're outside. So now I wanna talk about, this was our hardest, most difficult question that we asked. And we called it the ungettable. The question was take a picture with Otto the orange and make sure that Otto is holding that day's newspaper. It can be any newspaper as long as the date is during the range of Orange Quest, which was between November 5th and November 14th. So they would have received um, 30 points if they were able to post it to Instagram or they would have received 50 points to get all of the team members in the picture. So first I wanna start by saying that our school mascot is Otto the Orange. And you see Otto there wearing his mask, kind of hiding behind the student. Um, and Otto is part of a secret society here at SU. You never know when you're going to see Otto. Sometimes you might see Otto a couple times when you're outside walking on campus. Sometimes you never see Otto. And the secret society is they don't tell anybody who, they're actually students, um, but they even the students that have the jobs, they never tell anybody that they're actually Otto. And there's a few of them. Um, that put on the costume and walk around. So this was a really tough question to get and this team got it. So you can see that they've got the newspaper in the picture with the correct date and they've got Otto and they've got their team members. So they got all 50 points. So now I want to talk about our teams and the winners. So we had a total of six teams that were registered and they had between one and three students each. So in third place, we just love these names that the students came up with. In third place with 12 points, we have meat sweats. In second place, with 60 points, we had alternative facts. And this was the team that came up with the Life Imitates Art submission with Marlon Brando. And with first place with 112 points and the team, the only team that got the ungettable was Team Brain Juice. So you can see that only did they have fun coming up with answering the questions um, and doing the sort of the scavenger hunt around campus, but they had fun coming up with their very creative um, team names also. So one of the things that we asked for um, from the teams was some feedback. You know, the next time we do this, we wanted to know what to change or um, what we could do differently. And we were so happy to find out that our feedback was so positive. One of the teams wrote, thank you so much for all of your hard work in setting up this event. 
we really had a great time and learned a lot about the campus. We're really happy we won, but we don't need a prize. It was just great to participate. And that really surprised us. They weren't even interested in a surprise. They just wanted to do something different to remember it was during a pandemic, they were cooped up. So they were thrilled to be able to get outside. The other feedback we received was, thank you for developing Orange Quest for this year. It was a nice challenge and a welcome relief from everything going on in the world right now. And I hope to participate again in future years. And this was our student that was located in Alaska that um, sent in their submissions. So I feel like we reached a lot of different students um, and as far away as Alaska. So some of our lessons learned and surprises that our outreach team figured out. So Instagram, the students never used it. They opted to send their photos, um, emailed to us or to use the Google Drive. We're not really sure why, but they didn't go ahead and use the Instagram. Um, we were really surprised that the winning team didn't want the prize as you saw in their feedback, but everyone did receive, remember this was a low budget first time, but we were offering a pizza party for their floor and the dorm. Um, but everyone did in the end receive a t-shirt and um, SU masks. Our Google Docs, it did work this time around with our smaller number of teams, but we agreed that if this was something that we had maybe 20, 25 teams, that we're not sure that we weren't, wouldn't go with something else besides Google Docs. The students, as you saw, really appreciated the opportunity, especially now um, during this strange time. And next time we thought that we would do a stronger partnership with the Office of Student Light just to promote the event. Um, it was difficult because we had students in the dorms and then they went to completely remote. So it was hard to promote everything the way we wanted to. And our timing was difficult. Think of it, we just finished Halloween, there was an election going on, and again, our early move to online classes. But we do plan on offering this again. We're gonna offer it in the fall, and this time, um, the Department of Learning and Academic Engagement is going to take the lead. So I think that pretty much wraps up our presentation today, but we are certainly open to questions. Um, if anyone would like to offer any. I'm watching the chat. I don't I don't see any questions yet, but please do feel comfortable popping them in there. Hmm. Lots of great ideas. Thanks. Thank you guys for coming. This was great. We we had a lot of fun making or putting this all together and we were just so happy to have an opportunity to share it with someone um, with our colleagues. Uh, out in the field. Anita, there was just a question that came in about um, using student photos and if you um, were granted permission. Yes, yes, we uh, contacted them. That's why we see um, some, uh, a couple of the photos are from us, the same group, um, because we were able to reach those students. Oh, wait, there was a question and I missed it. Where to go? Um, did you have to get a special? Oh, students for the photo. Got that. Um, Another question in... um, was, was there anything that you worried about? 
oh my gosh, <laughs> the sands were constantly shifting underfoot. We were between, okay, um, Halloween and the students not not um, keeping to the the uh, mandate, no parties, no no uh, no group gatherings. Um, there was a little spike in our our COVID um, numbers right before we launched this thing, and then it was the election, um, and uh, it, there was a lot of um, uh, a lot of anxiety around the election, um, and we just didn't know how when to launch it, when the good time would be to launch it in this crazy semester. And then um, promotions were difficult too, as as uh, Marianne and Marianne mentioned. Um, just trying to get the word out to students was difficult because their attention was elsewhere, everywhere, um, and hard to it was hard to get, uh, garner their attention. So there were lots of worries, and then we had no money um, at all. So we had to use what we we um, we had we had our collections, and we had, we could promote that, and we could um, and we got some folks to um, contribute T-shirts from the Residence Hall Association. Had some tchotchkes and and uh, T-shirts to to share, um, and and we uh, we had the pizza party, which was the only thing that we had a budget for. So there were lots of worries along the way. Um, and, you know, with the idea to begin with, um, like I mentioned in, in my part at the beginning, we floundered quite a bit. Like, how do you how do you create uh, and engage students in this and, and get their attention in this, such a crazy um, time? Um, so we were so happy that we, we had a small posse of students that were were um, interested in playing the game and stuck it out. So. Um, yeah, lots of worries. Good question. <laughs> so we have a few more questions. Uh, did you three come up with the questions and activities? Um, what kind of work went into doing that? And did you get input from other library faculty or staff? Yes, to all of that. It wasn't just us three. Uh, it was the whole team. Um, I think we were five or six strong. And then we had um, two of our grad students, our iScholars, who are um, library students. Uh, as part of the team too. So we all worked together as a group to to uh, develop questions. We tapped our uh, individual departments because this this outreach team was comprised of of representatives from each of the uh, library departments. And um, so we all worked together. We were hopeful to do a little more with that connection with uh, uh, librarian uh, liaisons. However, um, uh, some librarians felt it was a little, uh, it wasn't sustainable at, at such a crazy time of the semester. So we, we pulled back on that question. Um, so we've tried to be um, inclusive as much as possible with the rest of the library and get some student input too before we launched it. We worked closely with the Residence Hall Association, which is comprised and run by all, all students, undergraduate students. So they, ha they had input too um, along the way. Um, there was, that was multi-parted, Steph. What was the other, what were the other parts uh, to that? Let's see. I think you hit all three parts. Um, that you had input from other staff. Um, it was not just you three working on it. You had some grad students working on it, and yeah. and how you came up with the different questions or activities. Yes, and I think someone. I also saw a question in the in the uh, chat about um, did, how did we brand that? Did we come up with it ourselves? The name, I guess, uh, was the question. And Orange Quest, yeah, we we branded it, but we ran it by marketing. We talked to the uh, Residence Hall Association just to get a sense for you know its catchiness. Um, um, so yeah, we branded it, and the Residence Hall Association, um, their their communications person who was a new house. Um, undergrad did all the design work for our uh, for the the promotion. So all that artwork that Abby showed on her her slide that was done by um, an undergraduate in in the school of Newhouse. Um, so that was cool. we we capitalized on on our student skills there. Another question um, that came in is, did students figure things out for themselves, or did they contact you with a lot of questions while the program was running? There were a couple of questions. I don't know. Do you guys recall? I don't recall a whole lot of questions. Um, there was, uh, I think there were some access issues. Someone couldn't get access to their Google form at one point. And um, we were all, you know, we had a full schedule of folks monitoring the um, email accounts. 
um, um, uh, you know, all even over the weekend, um, we had this monitored so we could catch those questions as they were coming up. Um, so yeah, that was, a, it was not many questions. Um, no, but again, no, it was a if, small team. Oh, too. And if I can just add, um, Anita, yes, we, um, the students really ran with it. They took the forms and we could see online that they were filling in the questions um, right away. I guess we sort of envisioned that they were um, all sitting around in their dorm room or with their masks on and just answering these questions and looking them up all had their computers on them. But um, they didn't ask us a lot of questions about the questions, you know, they were able to do it themselves. And coming up with all of us, the whole group came up with um, the, the fun questions, the riddles, the straightforwards, the ungettables. We, that was probably my favorite part, um, sitting down and coming up with these questions. We, it took us back too, you know, um, to our days on campus, I feel like. Yeah. That's great. Um, I think the last question in the chat is, would you consider running the Orange Quest both fall and spring semesters? <laughs> we talked <Thank> about <laughs> that. <laughs> Do you want to take that, Abby? Sure. Um, since this um, event now is going to fall into the department um, learning and academic engagement. Um, so the staff and the, the graduate students in that department will, will do the planning and carrying out of the event. I mean, we'll um, involve um, staff from other departments as well, but just coordinating an event like that does take a lot of time. Every year we're going to have to come up with a new set of questions um, in case students want to participate a second time. Um, so, so that part, it's fun, but it does take a lot of work. And we have um, other events that happen in the spring. So I think, um, at least for now, the energy will go into planning one for the fall. And um, we'll see how it goes. I know we had talked about doing one around March Madness <laughs> too, but you know, not, not in the next versions. That's a really cool idea. Does anyone else have other questions? Well, I, I want to thank you. Um, this was a really interesting topic. And um, um, the next session for the day will begin at 10.15 AM. So we have a, a little bit of a break. OK. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Stephanie. Thanks.